Good morning. Sorry about that, Jack. Jack got to the very end of the song and I was walking down the aisle to go upstairs real quick and push the record button. He's holding it and holding it and holding it. It's a good thing he wasn't having to sing it and hold it and hold it and hold it. Ah, let me catch my breath. Good morning, it's great to see you. Welcome here to worship at Coronado Community United Methodist Church. Some of you are back for the first time in a year. Welcome, we're glad you're here. My name is Peter Cottrell, in case you've forgotten, and we serve, I serve alongside Macon Armistead as pastors here. <sighs> Please wear your masks while you're in worship and keep a distance, even if you've been vac uh, vaccinated. We are waiting for the change from the CDC that allows us to do things differently, maybe put more folks in the room, uh, make some changes, but until they make those changes, this is where we're at. Remember, you're not supposed to sing even if you've got your mask on. The medical team said even whisper singing was not allowed right now. So I'm following the, the best experts we have. In case you're not aware, because most of us don't track it, the local infection numbers have been trending up for the past five weeks. We were at in the Edgewater, New Smyrna, Port Orange area local. We were at a running average of 11 and a half cases a day. 11 and a half. This week we hit 72 average. Volusia County had been down about five or six weeks ago to 87.5, and this week its average is 175. So just because it feels like everybody you talk to is vaccinated and, and they're not um, offering such localized numbers, I just want you to know people have gotten happy-go-lucky again, and, and it uh, is trending back up. So I invite you to be vigilant just for a little bit longer. Mike and Macon and I all get tested within the last 24 hours so that we can take our masks off when we lead our portions during worship. This Sunday, we're celebrating communion, drive-through communion. You had it inside, or you had it for the group. Fabulous. I'm learning new things. Um, let's pray. Oh, gracious God, allow this time of worship to put aside, let us put aside our worries, our anxieties, our everything about the past and our worries and anxieties and even our uh, unknown, the unknown of the future. Let us be present right here, right now. Let it just be about connecting to you. This is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear these words as a call to worship from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now Mike will uh, sing and we will sing in our hearts. God whose love is reigning o'er us, source of all the ending true, hear the universal chorus raised in joyful praise to you. worship new. Lift we then our human voices in the songs that faith would bring. Live we then in human choices, lives that like our music. 
Responsive reading is on the screen. This comes from Psalm 4, verses 2 through 5. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it in your, on your beds and be silent. Have for right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. I cast all my cares upon you. Any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all of my cares upon you. I will cast all my cares. Good morning. Before we begin our time of prayer, I would like to just let you know that if you were not here last week, or even if you were, would like to receive the communion elements that are prepackaged, uh, we will have those on your way out if you would like to uh, receive that. You can let uh, Jeannie, I think Roz is going to help, or myself, Peter, and we'll make sure we get those to you. Um, I also want to make you aware that. Um, Gary Sargent passed away this past week, um, who was the lay leader here for many years and um, had since moved back to Ohio to be with family, and we got word that he passed away uh, earlier this past week. So if we could remember Gary's family in our prayers this morning um, and just send our love to them. Let us go to God in prayer. God of restoration, you see brokenness and bring peace. You see chaos and bring order. You see violence and suffering and you bring hope and love. God, in all of the ways that our hearts are weary this morning, Make us new. Breathe Holy Spirit life into us. Renew us, transform us by the music, the prayers, the word, the community that we find here today. God, please be with those who are grieving those who have lost loved ones, those who are sick and suffering, those who have received a new diagnosis, those who are in a strained relationship, those who are missing family and friends. Lord, in all the ways that brokenness comes into our lives, we ask for your wholeness, your redemption, 
your love and peace to make us new creations today and every day. Lord, this transformation is only possible through the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be more like Christ in our lives, in this world. Fill us with the love of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be, thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Our scripture this morning is taken from the lectionary. It's a uh, ecumenically established uh, cycle of reading through scripture for worship that includes generally an Old Testament passage, a psalm, a gospel passage, and a letter passage. This week we're using 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. You may have heard some of this before. That's a good thing. If you um, grew up in the last, I don't know, I want to say 30 years, we've had a number of contemporary religious songs that use these words as well. I, I think I remember singing some of these words at camp or at UMW um, School of Christian Missions. Listen. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, what we will be has yet not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, or we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. 
No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I read that passage and all I could think of is, what is right? Who determines what is right? Now, uh, let me warn you that some of my hearing is assisted by reading of lips. So when I ask you how you know what is right and you answer me, it may very well be that you have said it clear and loud and I just can't read enough of your lips because you have masks on. Anybody want to take a stab at how we know what if something is right or not? Check it out in the Bible. So use the Bible as a guide. Thank you. What would Jesus do? Got to be really careful with that one because in the end, Jesus didn't end that part of it well, right? What we're taught as children. How many of you have determined what is right sometimes in your life by what your mom said? Dad, not as many as mom. Boss, some. <laughs> Ten Commandments. I mean, using the Bible is tough because different folks read it in certain ways and different translations do certain things. And so you've got to really stay in the word to have a sense of at what level is this good and right. Anybody else? Boss, yes. What feels right in your heart? Guilty conscience. If I feel bad the rest of the week, it must have been wrong. Does it, if it's made into a rule for everyone, would it benefit humanity? Is that close enough? Sorry, I'm a philosophy major who had classes on ethics. And so, you know, my first response is somebody said, if you can make it a general rule from everybody else and it benefits, then that's, that's what is determined to be right. I saw another hand over here. Is it the loving thing to do? So all the influences, influencers in your life that gave you a sense. Anybody else? Interesting, isn't it? If, if we all went by the guidance that it's based on what our mom said, you know, that's great for some who had good moms. Some folks have had good bosses and other folks have had bad bosses. But there's a sense in which what is right is relative to the person who's defining it. Uh, this week we were on vacation and we were, I don't know why, but somehow or another our um, topic of conversation got onto real estate. And, and somebody had sold a house in Texas and in order to take a backup offer in Texas, somebody has to give, put up non-refundable money. And they sold their house to the first person who bought. And when it was closed, he could have kept the money, but he wrote a check for that amount and sent it off because he knew their address. And for him, clearly right thing to do. And, and I honor that. I like to think that that's what I would do. Some of what we're going to say in Scripture is that it's defined by God. What is right is defined by God, not by us. But it's, we have to be really careful that as the countries we live in and we read the Bible and the time of the, and the era we live in, 
doesn't change our perception of how the Bible reads based on preferred cultural preferences. What is right in the United States may be different than what's right in India. And what's right in Indiana may be different than what's right in Alaska. So trying to figure out what's right is a little more difficult than we just off the top of our heads think. I want to make sure that I say that I'm not talking about true, what is right as in true, but as in right as in ethics, what is good to do, what is right to do and not do. What mom tells me, we've heard, uh, uh, you've heard this statement. At some point, politicians said, might makes right. And the implication there is that violence or threat of, or the power to create violence makes it right. And if, if you twist scripture enough, you can get there in the Old Testament. What my teacher tells me, what my boss tells me, what my spouse tells me, what a TV pundit tells me, i sorry, I didn't mean to get in your business. Maybe it's the group we identify with. This is who we are. We consider this right. Maybe we've decided what's right for me. What I can, if I can sleep at night, if I can look myself in the mirror, if it doesn't make me feel bad for days. Maybe it's what is tested and passes the test best. Maybe it's what is agreed on by the experts in the same field that I am in until something better is determined by research, which is peer reviewed. We can go on and on about what is and how we determine what is right. For some folks, what's right is what allows me to make the most money. I'm going to tell you, of course, that what is right is is essentially determined by God and our relationship with God. And I'm also going to tell you that it's different between different persons and in different locations and for different ages. Right can be or is different for different people. When Carla and I were out walking and we were talking about this upcoming sermon, she said her her brain uh, uh, immediately went to Mary and Martha, the story in Scripture It goes like this. Now they went on their way. He entered a certain village. We know what that village is. Where a woman named Mary or Martha welcomed him him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, Do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing at the moment. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. There is a sense in which based on your gifts and uh, what you're what God has purposed in your life, that your right should look different. I I think the key thing that I want to remind us all as we see this passage this morning is that right and righteousness in Scripture are often more about right relationship with God than they are about being perfect human beings. It's not about who can we blame for doing something wrong and therefore messing it up for all of us or being holier than anybody else. And part of the reason that I've come to this understanding of Scripture is because of how much God says God loves David. That getting things right and being perfect and being holy, David didn't do too well. But it kept... The scripture keeps lifting up David, and the reason is is because he had a heart for God. It was about the relationship. So let's live there. When we talk about righteousness, when we talk about right, it's about being in right relationship with God. Just 
being head over heels in love with God. Therefore, right is understood from inside the relationship we have with God. It is about the dance that we personally get to do inside that relationship with God. Right is, in a sense, mutually determined together with God. And so it's different for each of us in our different relationships with God. Like other relationships, each party in a relationship gets to veto that as a behavior that's considered right. I want to say that righteousness requires reflection and growth. You don't get to get into a relationship and just sit on your hands and do nothing. You engage and you grow and you try to grow better. It's not about purity or the Pharisees would have been Jesus' greatest partners and we would not have needed a crucified Savior. So as you reflect on what is right inside your relationship with God, make sure you check the downside or the weakness of your thinking. For example, if your description of being right is being able to look yourself in the mirror, I just want to remind you there are some folks who can look at themselves in the mirror and do things that you would never consider right. Yet, being able to live with your decisions is clearly part of the puzzle. It's not a simple, short answer. How do we know what's right? For me, I keep aiming for unconditional love. Some days that feels impossible. And yet Jesus seems to be saying over and over and over that unconditional love is always right. Let's be clear. If we follow the path of unconditional love, we're unlikely to get rich. And we may die. But Jesus, do what Jesus did, is risky. People will take advantage of you. They'll figure out that you're an easy mark because you're generous and caring and loving. It's about right relationship and our response to God's love. One more reminder, and I found this in my spiritual life to be mind-bogglingly clear. It's about our aim. Richard Rohr at one point said, trying to do the will of God is the will of God. That the aim of trying to be in right relationship with God is the will of God. Trying to do the will of God is the will of God. This path to righteousness is a journey of listening and growth. We call it discipleship. And you don't get to retire from it. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, make us today better disciples. Let us aim towards a stronger, healthy, thriving relationship with you. And then let our destiny fall where it may. We seek to be yours, as deeply connected as we can be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Steve, if you'll get ready to put the video on the screen for our offering, let me remind you once again, we don't pass the plates during this time. We'll have boxes at the back that allow you to put your offering in it if you've brought offering. But we do want to continue to lift up missions and ministries by putting videos on the screen. Gracious Creator, Redeemer, and sustainer. May our gratitude toward you and your blessings be so evident that we become like the life-giving breath we breathe. When we look into our past, we see your grace showering us like rain, even when we thought it could not get any worse. In our present, 
Make us aware of your presence so deeply that the space between this world and heaven is a gossamer thin veil. In our future, may our hope be piercing into the darkness of the unknown, guiding our hearts closer to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. From to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Mike, nice choice. Teach me to sing like angels. Prone to wander, but you chase after me. I hold up my eb stone, my Ebenezer, which is the stone of help. I'm connected to you and I need you. And my heart is connected by a chain, fetter. I am a debtor and therefore need grace. Take my heart, take and seal it. Hear now these words of benediction. Lord, oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Take our hearts, bind us together. Let us be one in you one with each other and one with you so that we might be the true body of Christ sent out into the world to offer unconditional love. We need you. Teach us to live and be just like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go in peace, amen and amen. Thank you.